from Faith Baptist Church, this is Power Surge. Now your speaker, Jim Kane. I'm reading today from John chapter 1. I'm going to begin at verse 1. I'm going to read several scripture, scriptures here. And I am going to talk about this conversation and this title, Perspective. And we're going to use a couple of these verses that I'm going to that I'm going to read today, but I want to take a moment for those that are watching by video and those that are listening on the radio, uh, and, and if you're wanting to follow along John chapter 1, but let me, uh, let me encourage you to reach out to us at faithbaptistlinden.com, faithbaptistlinden.com. We would love to hear from you. We would uh, love for you to go there, faithbaptistlinden.com. Click on the contact page. And there are several modes of contacting us. I know it's the end of the year here, but uh, and you may be busy, but we would love to hear from you, get your prayer requests. We would love to hear your praise reports, and there's more information. If you do not have a church home, please visit us on Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. right here at Faith. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's a message in it, within itself right there. The same was in the beginning with God. Now here's one of the key verses, verse 3. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him, verse 4, in Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 6, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, and all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. We talked about it a little bit in, in last week's message. Verse 9, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh to the world. Verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, they gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. Father, as we go into this message about your word and about where you are in our lives and why you came to this earth and deal with the conversation of perspective, we need a touch of heaven. In this last Sunday of this year, Father, we need a touch of heaven. Don't let us go into the new year without a touch of heaven. Help us to end this year with a touch of heaven, with perspective. For the next few minutes, Lord, will you anoint me with the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Help me, Father, to, to, to love on people. Help me, Father, to minister to people. Help me to do and say what I am supposed to do and say, and don't let me do or say anything that I'm not supposed to do or say. Now, Father, I pray for everybody that is watching and listening to this message. I pray that you would open their hearts right now. We're going to talk about perspective. Open their hearts, Father. Open their minds. Open their souls that they may receive what thus saith the word of the Lord. I thank you in advance, and I give you praise, and I give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Perspective can really, 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 really mess things up. When you perceive something about somebody, it can totally be false. It's simply a perspective. 
Years ago, when I was in my 20s, uh, I was late all the time. I was habitually late. I had, I had friends, Mark and Susan. Mark and Susan, very dear friends. And, and Mark and Susan, we were close. And every time that I was going to meet them or show up or, 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 they would laugh in advance because they knew that Jim was going to be late. And I was. Not a, not a good habit to have. Now let's fast forward a few years. Uh, they went their ways. I went my way. Uh, you know, we, we didn't lose contact, but we didn't spend a lot of time together. A few years later, was going to meet Susan. Me and my family were going to meet Susan one day for dinner, just to get together, catch up. Susan got there at the perfect, correct time that we were to meet. I and my family had already been there for probably 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes. Her mouth flies open. And she was shocked. And she said, I would have come earlier than the time we were supposed to meet, but I know that you're always late. Years later, I know that you're always late. And so I didn't rush, nor did I expect you. Now what Susan didn't know is years earlier, maybe with a little maturity and maybe with a little nudging from some mentors, I, I changed that behavior to the point now that to me, if you, go, if you gotta be somewhere at a certain time, if you're not 10 minutes early, you're late. That's just how I think. I don't tolerate, I'm not, I don't do well with late people. Again, that's just perspective. But Susan's perspective of me and my family being 20 minutes early, it shocked her because her perspective was that Jim was always late. Now let me take you to a different angle. I wish I could show it to you, those that are watching on the video, and I know I can't, those that are listening on the radio, but I want you to imagine a picture. This has been several months ago that I saw this picture. And it was a picture of a couple of six or seven year olds that uh, had been playing some sports and doing something. I don't know if it was soccer or what it was. But they had set up a little, what you call a, a, a mini Olympics box. They had a box in the center that was the tallest, and then they had a box over to the other side for second place, and it was, it was a little uh, shorter. And then they had another box over on the other side that was for third place, and it was even shorter than the second place box. The picture only showed the first place little boy and the second place little boy. Let's talk about perspective again. In that picture, it showed the second place little boy holding his second place trophy sign up brightly. So much so that the skin of his stomach showed he was stretching it up and high. So much that it pulled his shirt up. And he, it appeared he was not only laughing in a big old smile on his face, but probably jumping up and down. It was a still frame, so I can't verify that. Now that was the second place little boy. The picture did not have third place. The first place little boy, who was a little higher, he had a frown on his face. And he was looking at the second place little boy with a frown like, what is your problem? Let me tell you what, right now, perspective is this. You can be in first place and not have the joy of being first place. You could be in second place because maybe that little boy thought he'd come in last whatever the deal and the situation was, but he was celebrating. Oh, I know that goes against our society. I know that, that, goes, against, that goes against the sporting world, but he was celebrating his accomplishment. And I want to say it to you right now that sometimes, sometimes where we are in life is worth celebrating. I want, to, I want to talk to you. I want to get right down in your business this morning. In this last Sunday of the year, I want to get in your business and say right now, you probably have a lot of things to celebrate that you ought to thank God and praise God for this past year. 
Maybe it's been a horrible year in many ways, but I guarantee you, you have a whole lot to praise God and thank God for. In this year, you, you may be in 12th place, but maybe you should have come in 112th place. But you were able to move from 112th to 12th. It's your perspective in how you look at it. You've got to look at your backstory. You have to look at where you should be today. You have to look at where you have been and what you have gone through. I'm, I'm going to step out and say it right now. There's people watching and listening to me right now that you, put, you should have been dead. You should have been in the grave. You should have been in the hospital. You should have been in jail. You should have been anywhere but where you are. But yet you, even in 12th place or 23rd place, you have so much to be thankful for. You have been blessed in so many ways. Look at the backstory. Look at your own backstory. I don't know the backstory of the little boy that was in second place that was probably dancing around. I don't, I don't know his backstory. I don't know the backstory of the little boy that was in first place. Who knows the little boy that was in first place? He got first place, but he, his dad's been yelling at him because he missed the goal. Who knows? You have to look at where you are, where you've been, and where you really should be if life was fair. Perspective. Another great example of that are waitresses. Now, I like good customer service. I expect good customer service. And sometimes I probably step out of uh, the best realm of Christianity when I don't get it. Being honest, being candid with you here. But I have to stop and look at the perspective. Let's hypothetically say that me and my family or me and my wife, we go to a restaurant and we get terrible service and the server, he or she, they're forgetful or they're this or that and they seem a little rattled. I'll just I'll pretend my server is female. You never know what this female is going through. You never know if this server... If she is rattled because she doesn't know how she's going to pay this month's rent. You never know if she, if she uh, has left a, a toddler somewhere and she don't have a lot of confidence in the people or the person that she's left this toddler with. Or maybe she's working with excruciating pain. He or she in their back. It's perspective. I don't think they should probably tell us all this but I think that I should probably, as a Christian, I should probably look at it and try to understand what is the possible backstory of where we are. Now, what I'm finding in this last, in this last Sunday of the year, what I find is some of us Christians, we feel very arrogant about this year because we had a good year maybe. Then I find that there are some Christians in this last Sunday of the year that feel very, very defeated about this year. But I respond with this and say, but. Had a great year, but. Had a defeated year, but. What does the Lord, what does the Lord think about your performance this year? Don't try to measure up to what I expect out of you. Don't try to measure up to what your neighbor wants out of you or even your job wants out of you, your family, your friends. Don't try to measure up what really matters is what he thinks. And that's where we have to strive and please him and go forward. I want to refer to what I said was a key verse in John chapter 3 where he said this, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. I want to skip down to another key verse right here, John 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you could be, you could possibly be in last place, but you're still a winner. I'll give you an example. If you have a broken leg or an injured leg and you decide you want to run in a marathon, you could come in last place, but the fact that you finished with that injury, you're a winner. 
And that's what I want you to do. In this last Sunday of, uh, of this year, I want you to look at the perspective. I want, to, I want you to look at where you are. You say, but Jim, you don't understand. I am in last place or I am in 112th place. It does not matter what does God think. Where are you with the Lord? Is he pleased with your performance for, the, for this year? I read to you, again, I'll refer to it, his glory out of John 1, 14. It's about his glory. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about anybody else. It is about his glory. Now remember this. If you're in the valley, it's about perspective. You're down in the valley, go ahead and grow a garden. It is about how you view it and how you look at it. You're at rock bottom. Well, guess what? You can't go any lower. All you can do is go up. You're in last place. That's all right. Keep trying. You got a new year coming on shortly. If you look at it that way, have you learned a lesson? Have you picked up on something? And finally, in closing, I want to refer what the Apostle Paul, how he referred to clarifying our goals and our perspectives and our missions, even as Christians, for the next year. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. He said, not that I have already attained or already perfect. You're not perfect, I'm not perfect, we're not perfect. But he said, I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse, verse 14 is the message for you, perspective. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, I press. I press towards the mark of the high calling in God, of God in Christ Jesus. I press towards the mark of the high calling. What is your calling for next year? What is God speaking to you about? What has the current year done to you? And maybe the Holy Spirit has nagged at you all year long. Only you and God can answer this. Will your pride prevent you in this next year from overcoming things that you struggled with in this year. It's all about your perspective and you trusting in him and believe in John 1 and 3 that says all things were made by him. Let's pray. Father, we love you. What a word. What a word. What, a, what an incredible word. Help me. Start with me, Lord. Help my perspective to be what it needs to be. Oh, I wrestle with this too. There's sometimes I wrestle with where I could be versus where I want to be or where I think I should be. But most of all, what is my, what is my pleasing to you level? What am I doing? What have I done that pleases you? That's the most important part. For your glory, as John 1.14 says. John 1, 3, for all things were made. Help us to follow after your spirit. Oh, I know we have competitive natures down here, and some of it's good and fun, but when it comes to you, help us to be pleasing. Help us in this last Sunday of this year, Lord, to be able to launch into a new year with this year past and changing going forward to please you and have the right perspective. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This has been Power Surge with speaker Jim Kane of Faith Baptist Church. For more information about this ministry, visit us online at faithbaptistlinden.com or visit us in person Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m.